untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at an Abzan reanimator deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Nethroi Apex of Death, the 5 mana 5-5 five five legendary cat nightmare beast with death touch and lifelink can be mutated for 7 mana total, and whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So this can be an incredibly powerful ability, as long as we have a fully stocked graveyard of creatures for us to return, and there are a ton of mill decks in the current standard format, in which case we'll have no trouble getting value from Nethroi, but just in case we're not up against a mill deck that's actively filling our graveyard, we do need to have other ways of enabling Nethroi, so we will have some ways of filling our graveyard as well. And there's a few ways to build around Nethroi. We could play it in a mutate deck, where we plan on casting Nethroi for 5 mana, and then subsequently mutating onto it to trigger the ability, but in this deck, instead we're opting to play Nethroi as our only mutate creature, so the plan is to mutate it for 7 mana onto an existing non-human creature that's already in play to trigger the ability. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got a full playset of Gilded Goose, which can help us ramp by sacrificing the food token that it generates to add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool, and can also generate more food tokens in the late game. And being a zero-powered creature is actually quite nice with Nethroi, because that means that if Gilded Goose is in our graveyard, we can essentially return it for free as an additional creature, since it doesn't contribute towards a 10 total power, so we can get back as many zero-powered creatures in our graveyard as we can. Then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Mire Triton, 2 mana, 2 one, a zombie merfolk with death touch, that when it enters the battlefield mills the top 2 cards and gains 2 life, so this can help us fill the graveyard for Nethroi. Then we also have the full playset of Fiend Artisan, a 1-1 one, one, Nightmare that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each creature card in our graveyard, and for X and a hybrid black or green we can tap it and sacrifice another creature to then search our library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. So Fiend Artisan has quite a bit of synergy with Nethroi, it's only a 1-1 one, one creature once it's in the graveyard, even though it might be much bigger once it enters the battlefield, so it's very easy to get it back with Nethroi. Also if we mutate onto Fiend Artisan with Nethroi, it's going to be a 5-5 Death Touch lifelink that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each creature card still in the graveyard, so it scales nicely with Mutate as well, and then of course it acts as a sacrifice outlet, so we can potentially sacrifice some of our creatures, and then have them go to the graveyard where we can then get them back with Nethroi to provide even more value, especially considering a lot of the creatures in the deck have a nice enter the battlefield ability, so we don't mind sacrificing them and then bringing them back. Then we also have the full playset of Skull Prophet. This is the only human in the deck, so we can't actually mutate onto it with Nethroi, but it's still quite synergistic as it helps us ramp, so it can make it easier to mutate Nethroi for 7 mana, and can also tap it to mill the top 2 cards to fill the graveyard, to then get more creatures back with Nethroi's mutate ability. Then at 3 mana we've got a full playset of a Woestrider, a 3-2 creature that when it enters a battlefield generates an 0-1 goat creature token, and we can sacrifice another creature at any time to scry one, so that's very useful in combination with Nethroi, as it will help us find Nethroi if we don't have one already, and if we're about to mutate Nethroi we can sacrifice any creatures on the battlefield to then get back with Nethroi's ability, and since we have so many sweet enter battlefield abilities that can generate a ton of value, and then we can also escape Woestrider out of the graveyard for 5 mana, which can be very useful if we're up against a mill deck. Then we also have the full playset of Lanor Visionary, draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and then taps to add green, so makes it easier to ramp into Nethroi's mutate ability, and another nice enter the battlefield ability to potentially get back from the graveyard. Then we've got two copies of Agadim's Awakening, which can be played as a land or as a sorcery for X and triple black, returning from our graveyard to the battlefield, any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost X or less, so another nice way to get value from our graveyard. And then we've got more ramp at 4 mana with Solemn Simulacrum, a 2-2 golem that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for a basic land card to put on the battlefield tapped, and when Simulacrum dies we can draw a card, so another creature we don't mind sacrificing with our various sacrifice effects like Woe Strider or Fiend Artisan, and then subsequently get back with Nethroi. And then we also have two copies of Polucronos Unchained, a 0-0 that enters a battlefield with 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and escapes with 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it if we escape it for 6 mana by exiling 6 other cards from our graveyard, 
and for one, a black and a green, Polychronos fights another target creature, and if damage would be dealt to Polychronos while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, we prevent the damage and remove that many plus one plus one counters from it instead, which can be quite nice if we're fighting any death touch creatures, that way Polychronos doesn't die right away. Polychronos of course also great against various mill decks as we get to escape it out of the graveyard, and also great synergy with Nethroi, since Polychronos is just a zero powered creature when it comes to counting up to 10 power, so we can also essentially get it back for free with Nethroi's ability, and then if we mutate onto Polychronos with Nethroi, it's going to be a 5-5 Death Touch lifelink with any number of plus one plus one counters on top of that, so it could potentially be an 11-11 if we mutate onto a fresh Polychronos, so a ton of great synergy there as well. And then of course our full playset of Nethroi, which we can of course cast at 5 mana as well if we just need a 5-5 with Death Touch and lifelink. Then going over the mana base, we definitely have more white sources than we'll ever need, especially considering we're planning on mutating Nethroi instead of casting it, which doesn't even require white mana, but a lot of the white sources in the deck are sort of free with our two pathways generating white mana, but we can just play them as black or green sources instead, as well as the four copies of Indatha Trium, which is just nice to have so we can cycle it in a late game if we're flooding out, so it's not too bad that it comes into play tapped, and then our four copies of Fabled Passage to grab our swamps and forests, as well as a single basic planes which we can also grab with our Solemn Simulacrum in case we need to hard cast a Nethroi, but we could easily play a bunch of white cards in the main deck if we wanted to, or we could potentially get rid of some of the pathways and make room for maybe the black or green castles which can be useful to maybe give us a one mana discount when mutating Nethroi or potentially give us a bit of more card draw in the late game although our deck has plenty of built-in value engines already. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright we're on the draw facing a lures deck so probably blue black mill. Uh, this sounds fine, got a bit of ramp and a Wist Rider. And if our opponent's gonna start milling us, they'll put some escape cards in the graveyard for us too. Turn two Prophets, maybe turn three Solemn. But we still have plenty of plays in case they deal with a profit here. I'll take one. And then this can probably be green. Can be countered by Drown yet, but a Mystical Dispute main deck does the job. Opponent puts Lurse in hand, so not the most exciting turn for them. So, how about Visionary? And then I probably don't want to mill myself in this matchup, so we'll just hit for three. And I'll wait on playing the Fabled Passage for as long as possible to avoid putting extra cards in Graveyard to enable the opponent's synergies like Into the Story. And Lurus has nothing to get back. So pretty uneventful place from our opponents. Can just solemn. And we'll grab a forest. And then can play a voice rider. Alright, so we're just looking for Nethroi at this point. Heartless Sanct kills Prophet against Cry 1. So, four cards in Graveyard at the moment. And then upkeep. I'll sag the goats. 
There we go. Now I'm not going to mutate into 5 open mana. But we can play another Voice Strider. Hit for 3. Do I want to send in a Simulacrum? Yeah, probably. I guess even Visionary can get its hands dirty. Potent could maybe have an Extinction event. Although we've got a decent mix of odd and even costs, so... Call of the Death Dweller gets back Lurs. Mills me for two. Probably a good time to get our planes, just in case. And then do I want to sack a goat? Um, I guess upkeep. Let's see, we've got eight cards in Graveyard, so they could have a Drown here to counter Nethroi. So I probably don't want to sacrifice too much stuff. And there should be plenty of creatures to get back already. So let's just try mutating this onto... If we want to play around Eliminate specifically, we should mutate onto Simulacrum instead of Gilded Goose. Even though getting a 5-5 Death Touch Lifelink flying would be nice. Eh, yeah, maybe that's a little safer. And then we've got two, four, six, nine. Get an extra land. All right, so I'm doing pretty well here. The Thieves Guild Enforcer shrank back after we removed a bunch of creatures from the graveyard. Mills over Polucranos, which we can escape. And yeah, my opponent has seen enough here. They did seem to have a pretty weak draw, but you can see how some of our cards line up favorably against the blue-black mill deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Plenty of ramp, just gotta hope the graveyard synergies follow suit. Opponent's got the same start. Yeah, I'll play Visionary here. Next one we can Simulacrum, grab a Swamp. And then Pulchronos could be a nice play. Gem Razor gets to blow up Solemn. Although we get to draw a card at least. And I'll take it. So, Polychronos plus Fiend Artisan. I guess I can fetch since we've got Pathway in case we need white mana.
So they do seem to have a pretty big mutate theme with the Great Horn now too. Well, Polychronos can find some creatures next turn. I'll take four. can also use Fiend Artisan to search up more creatures, potentially. I can find the Hellhound kind of for free and then find Gem Razor. That's my entire turn, although it's not a bad turn. Yeah, let's do that. Can attack first. And if they block, I'll just let that happen and we'll let the Gem Racer stay in play. I'll fight now to prevent any instant speed shenanigans. And then we just pass. If I had one more mana, I could have used Fiend Artisan to sacrifice Goose to get a second Goose just to make a food token. But we're one mana short here. And I think I'm okay chomping just because Serata threatens quite a bit of damage here. Would just kill us if we let it through. This grows the Fiend Artisan. Gem Racer on defense. Yeah, I don't hate getting Nethroi. So X equals 5. Could have also gone for another Polychronos, but this seems reasonable. Have to chump, otherwise we're dead. But I can get the Visionary back potentially with Awakening, although I'm missing triple black since we don't have three swamps in the deck. So this turn is just going to be double visionary. Fiend Artisan could also be activated again. Play visionary, draw card, sacrifice visionary to get maybe a 4 drop like second Polychronos. Just need to make sure we don't die to Rada. I guess Nethroi can attack Vivian. They'll probably just jump with the beast. Wist Rider's nice too. Provides a chum blocker for Rada. Could also use Fiend Artisan to sacrifice the goats to then search up a goose. Is that worth it? Or we can leave Fiend Artisan on defense. And we'll search up a goose here. That'll give me potentially triple black for awakening too. And now I can take a rata hit even if they pump and not die. Thank you. 
Vivian minus two. This is going to be scary. Mutates Greathorn. Which can search up anything that costs three or less. It's going to be a second brush fire, which they can also pump with Fabled Passage. Now I can chump Greathorn with a Strider at least. Another Fable Passage over the top. That was unfortunate. And that was essentially 8 more damage out of nowhere. So I definitely have to chump. Uh, so I'm taking 9 plus force 13, so I have to chump one more. So now... They can't Ember Cleave me at least, so that's not a concern. So this is 9 plus 4 is 13. I go to 1. I can Scry. Next turn I maybe get to Awakening. Don't need Fabled Passage, I don't think. If my opponent doesn't have any blockers, they're also just dead on the way back here. So let's attack first. And then we can Awakening second main if they're not dead. Alright, looks like they're just dead. Well, opponent had an impressive turn. Still had Awakening to get back a whole bunch of creatures from the graveyard here. Let's take a look. Could have gotten back Goose at one. A three drop, maybe Strider. And then a four drop, Polucranos. So that would have been pretty effective. But yeah, wasn't even necessary. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Missing black man, I suppose. So that could be an issue. Although I can play Fiend Artisan in the meantime. And we've got no shortage of black sources in the deck. Even a Gilded Goose could help. Ah, there we go. Run out profits. Facing a Yorion deck of the blue variety. Profit down. I'll play another one. At least as a three-powered creature it doesn't die to Elspeth's Nightmare, which could be a concern. So let's try to see what we mill before deciding what to do next. Right, we'll mill for two. So now I can play Fiend Artisan and not have it die to a potential Elspeth's Nightmare at least. Extinction Event on Even exiles it, that's too bad. Play Polychronos. So we need more mana so we can eventually mutate Nethroi. For now, head for six. Don't think we're playing around a second extinction event. Sadly, no escape creatures in the graveyard yet. Ashok can minus on Polucronos. 
just gonna plus. So we can fight the Nightmare here end of turn. Take out Ashok. See what we draw first. And yeah, the next turn we could potentially mutate. Thirst kills Pelucranos, that's fine. And a lantern, oh. Well, that's a setback. There goes our graveyard strategy. So I guess we're not mutating Nethroi after all. I mean, I could still mutate just to make a 5-5 five five here and attack right away, but that seems worse than playing this and maybe hard casting Nethro or just waiting for them to sacrifice Lantern. Yeah, we'll just hit for four. Yeah, main deck Lanterns. Too bad here. Vengeance. On Druid, kills two of our creatures. And then we can click on some cards that are about to be exiled anyway. Would have been nice, you have to admit. Although we get to hit for five. And hope the opponent doesn't have a removal spell here. One is looking at their graveyard. Cling to dust to draw a card. Alright, so they don't have an answer yet. They could have used it to gain life too. I guess they still can if there's a creature to exile, but I guess they got rid of all of them. So that's no longer gonna work. They can chump with the crawling barons. You're gonna animate the smaller one to chump with, that makes sense. Let's see if they can top deck their way out of it. Extinction events, yep, that'll definitely help. Although there's Pelucranos, not a bad draw. So if their plan is just to play Yorion, we can beat that. And my opponent explodes, wow. Even beating the main deck Soul Guide Lantern to prevent an awesome Nethroid turn. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Facing Temple of Deceit. For now, play Triton. Which mills over Pelucranos. Uh -huh, opponents on blue black mill. So let's see how we'll do here. Fiend artisan already up to a five five. 
and they're combining tutelage with peer into the abyss for the wombo combo the fairy can minus on fiend artisan so good to spend a turn taking out the fairy but we get to ramp with simulacrum or we could run out a second artisan Yeah, um, I think I still like ramping this turn. So they might as well plus now with Teferi. Maybe I should fetch now before I run out of basic lanes. Get triple blank for Angadim's Awakening. Ooh, Extinction Event's painful here since we only had even costs. No easy way to play around it. But we get to reload with Simulacrum and Fiend Artisan here. And next turn maybe Mutate Nethroi. Hope they don't have another extinction event. Second tutelage instead. They're still missing a lot of black mana to cast Peer into the Abyss. So they might be trying to mill us the old fashioned way. One card at a time. Opponent passes. So, if I were to mutate Nethroi into Simulacrum, we could not get back anything, hit them for 17, which isn't quite lethal. But it's probably still worth it here. And then we'll just get back some creatures. They might counter this, but then they're not killing Artisan. And Shwari Disruption, that's a painful one. Opponents at 3, 26 cards remain. And another Teferi. It takes impressive knowledge to be a I do love a good puzzle. All right, we can try again. And if they minus on Simulacrum here in response, we can just kill them with Artisan. And my opponent explodes, sweet. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, there's definitely a few advantages to playing this deck against someone trying to mill you, as you get access to all your escape cards, and both Nethroi and Fiend Artisan turn into literal nightmares for the opponent. So yeah, as we mentioned in the introduction, there's a lot of ways to approach this Nethroi reanimator deck. You could go with a heavier mutate approach. You could add maybe a toolbox of creatures to search up with Fiend Artisan. Although in my experience, just turning Fiend Artisan sideways and attacking with it is plenty enough. So yeah, definitely a lot of room for improvement, but pretty happy with where the deck is at so far. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.